I think if you look back to 1966, which is a powerful year for Easter Rising commemoration, of course the 50th anniversary of the events in Dublin, you look and you see that the uh, Queen Elizabeth visits Balmoral near Belfast. There is a parade of some of the veterans. But by and large, you get the feeling, I think, from newspaper accounts that veterans speaking to the journalists say oh, this this is probably moving towards the end of this story in, in popular consciousness. The, the veterans are aging. The story is diminishing. Uh, even perhaps the Second World War has taken over as a more recent uh, story of, of global conflict. And in 1969, 1970, 1971, that all changes. Uh, you have um, conflict, of course, of a serious kind. And in particular, you have on the Loyalist side an organisation, paramilitary group, founded by Gusty Spence, which calls itself the Ulster Volunteer Force in a bid to reclaim that story of 1912-1913. And when those prisoners are in jail, because many of them end up in long cash in, in, in the prison camps, they start to name the different uh, huts in Long Kesh after First World War battles where the Ulster Division fought. I know of one particular man, quite an able artist, who painted some of the very first Somme murals to exist on the walls of the uh, huts. So uh, that's the paramilitary story, um, but as well as the paramilitary story, and you see that blossoming today in areas like the Shankill Road, where there are numerous murals to do with the Somme and the Ulster Tower and the men going over the top of the 36th. As well as that, I think, you know, the, there was a way in which inside the North, the whole of society became militarised. Uh, I mean, a classic example of that inside what one calls the, the Protestant community is the way in which many men ended up in the police, they ended up in the prison service, uh, some served in the Ulster Defence Regiment or joined the army, uh, and that involved families. Each one of those men or women had a family and neighbours who were also militarised by that experience. So I think the story of the Battle of the Somme spoke in some really vital way um, to many uh, Unionist communities who were undergoing the experience of being locked into a conflict. They weren't in the trenches. And somehow to put that on the wall in a, in a mural or to go out to France whenever you were able to uh, eventually get a reasonably cheap train or plane ticket uh, and visit the site of a loved one's death. All of that grew, I think, throughout the period of the Troubles. And there's one other factor, I think. For the Orange Order, um, the story of 1690 and the Glorious Revolution, Battle of the Boyne, recedes further and further back into history. Um, and for um, an order that's trying to attract young people in, for unionism that's trying to revive its cause, that story is almost paling into legend. It's a man on a white horse, hard to identify with. But the thought of a young man from a working class background on the, on the Shankar Road uh, going off to war and being captured in films and photographs that you can see and recognise. Uh, in many ways it helps revive what unionism feels it's about. Uh, it, it's, it's a revival of um, a story of a, a, a battle on a river if you like but it's a more modern one and it's one that speaks I think more uh, clearly to a whole generation who are able, of course, themselves now to do genealogical work. We can all do that, the access to the technologies there. So it all adds up to a story that has grown and developed and become, I think, much more intense. And I think also, if I might finally add, that the sense of Britishness in the North, for many Unionists, is much more difficult to hold to these days, because Britain has changed in so many ways. It's so much more multicultural. It's uh, a modernising, secularising place. And uh, Ulster Unionism may find itself struggling to, to match itself with that nowadays. But the story of military history is such an important unifying factor throughout Britain. From Shetland to Cornwall, Remembrance Day is the one big public ceremony that, that I think it, it exceeds all others. And if you can tap into that, which many, um, many do by wearing the poppy, um, by, by commemorating, by travelling to the Western Front, uh, you, you tap into something irreducible about Britishness and British identity in that military story. 
and I think that helps greatly uh, as unionism seeks to uh, ground itself and keep itself solid as it faces much of the, the, the confusing political and cultural environment of the present.